Hello everyone, I am here again to make another video about somatic OCD. I feel that somatic OCD is an extremely important topic to talk about because the information out on the internet or out in help centers, it's very limited. And uh, it might be more common than we know of, but a lot of people feel really stuck because this type of OCD carries its own challenges. Now, before I go any farther, what I've realized working with Rob and being with the What's Up groups, no matter what your fear is, because OCD is just a fear of something, that fear will feel as real as possible to each individual person. So you might think it is the worst thing ever for you, but someone else with a different fear might feel the same exact way about that fear. So that's something really important to keep in mind. Because comparative suffering, as I've mentioned before, saying this OCD is worse than this one and this is worse than that, it doesn't really do anything productive. It keeps you in the woe is me category and helps you from taking action to do what's necessary to recover. So what is somatic OCD? Somatic OCD is a fear revolving around some sort of neutral sensation or can carry over into any real sensation. But, you know, blinking, swallowing, and breathing are the most common with salivation, and it could be your heartbeat or sneezing and so forth. And usually the fears accompanied with this are, I am going to be stuck noticing this sensation forever and my life is ruined. Which, as we know, there is no evidence to support that and you're already jumping to conclusions. And that's just the way it's going to be in the beginning for most people. Since... So as if you have somatic OCD, particularly because I can only relate to this one because it's my main fear and then second is body dysmorphia, is it turned on like a light switch. So why it might not be as common in the literature or say the OCD community? Well, OCD, the main topic society knows about when we talk about OCD is contamination OCD or harm OCD, where there's outward compulsions majority of the time. Somatic OCD doesn't really have an outward compulsion or outward checking. It does have internal checking. Is the sensation still there? Am I still aware of my sensation? Which is a huge part of the journey. So, but the main compulsions that I struggle with, I think that most people struggle with, is they try to distract themselves in an unhealthy manner where it's no longer short-term distraction and is now is long-term distraction. And this will keep you in the cycle. I've seen lots of people suggest to people distract yourself and I understand where they're coming from and why they might think that that statement has some validity, but it's, it's actually horrible um, advice. And I can only speak for myself, but Distracting yourself, which I did for six to eight months, did not do anything for me but keep me more locked in the cycle and especially my avoidance behaviors. So how did my journey begin? Some of you have probably watched my other videos where I talked about how I had bilateral tinnitus, aka or tinnitus, and ringing in my ears. I've been to lots of music festivals, but I was hyper-locked on my tinnitus sound. I was checking it, I was doing this and so forth, and it really led me to a place where all I was thinking about was the ringing in my ear. I realized that what was keeping me stuck was me being scared of it because our brains are very good at tuning out white noise or something that we don't think is relevant and the brain just says, well, that doesn't need to be paid attention to. But when you become stuck and then that fear loop cycle, you know, fear adrenaline cycle starts uh, that Dr. Claire Weeks talks about in Self-Help for Your Nerves, it really becomes a almost this catastrophic cycle that you get stuck in very quickly and has the potential to become very, very dis uh, disabling. So after about three months of very severe tenderness, I slept maybe an hour or two a day for about three months. This is while I was still in the back end of school taking national board examinations. I was an absolute mess. I mean, my anxiety was probably 10 out of 10 every moment of every single day. Then I had a panic attack thinking about blinking. I um, locked onto my blinking really, 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 really hard. I remember lying in the parking lot freaking out to my fiance at the time, who's now my wife. You know, oh my gosh, what's going on? I can't stop thinking about my blinking. And my wife, you know, what are you talking about? You know, because obviously when you're not exposed to this community, most people don't understand. This is why I made that video on the importance of educating instead of saying stuff like, you don't understand or you're dumb and you don't understand OCD. That doesn't do anything. It's a very common misconception about he how people handle arguments or situations on hard topics. They try and force their opinion on people and it actually doesn't work and it never will work. So how was my timeline look to date? So I developed linking OCD about 
you know, just fear of blinking. Um, September of last year, that lasted about two weeks. And I remember leaving the gym and I had a panic attack thinking about my salivation and sal- uh, swallowing. Uh, those have been hooked now for about a year, a year and two months. Um, I'm definitely going towards recovery, but I still have a lot of work to do. I want to talk about what it was like. So that switch was very, almost like a faucet in my mouth. So if this is what you're experiencing, you're not alone. Uh, Think about putting a garden hose in my mouth and putting it under my tongue and letting that garden hose go all day, every day. At first, I was spitting into a cup because a therapist I was using, she was a very nice lady. She just didn't understand OCD. Um, She's like, well, just spit in the cup. You know, it's fine. She obviously doesn't know that that was a bad idea. (laughs) So I was spitting in a cup. I remember sitting in national board examinations for day two in the radiology review. I spat in a cup for eight hours looking at radiology stuff. That is hilarious now that I think about it. Um, It got so bad that I ended up in a mental hospital. I will do a separate video about my experiences in the mental hospital. I know some people have fears about going insane. I think we all probably have partial fear of that or fear of leaving, losing control. It kind of comes with the territory of going through recovery. You know, well, what if I use this too much? What if I read too much and I lose control? It's a natural thing. Your brain is trying to bring you back into a reaction. So it's something that we all go through. So ended up in a mental hospital. My wife called. A uh, very good thing for me. I had a very crazy experience in there. Uh, I was locked in a room and studying. And then I left and I, I just played video games. I already played high competitive video games, but it got really, really bad. I was playing upwards to 15 hours a day, sometimes 36 hours straight without moving out of the exact chair I'm sitting in right now. I mean, look at this thing. This, this chair is on its last limbs. You know what I mean? So, but I sat in this chair for 36 hours and played video games and I would just completely was smoking two to three jewel cartridges a day. I started smoking again. I was vaping. I have a severe porn addiction. I will cover that too. It's not nearly talked about enough. Mine is not so much a sex addiction as it is a porn addiction. Um, They can coincide together, but mine was really, really bad. So everything in my life almost came down to finding this perfect feeling or sensation. And that is probably more than likely why OCD stuck with me with somatic OCD because I'm not afraid of anything else. Like I I have no fears. I like speeding in cars. I like doing things that give me an adrenaline rush. I like hiking. I like doing stuff like that. I've always been that way. I have very bad ADHD and I'm an eccentric human, but this really locked on because I, my body, you know, probably was like, well, he can't control this. Ha ha. So it locked. And what makes somatic OCD for myself more, a little bit more frustrating throughout the journey is you have no control over your sensations. This is something where acceptance is absolutely key. You will salivate, you will swallow, you will breathe, your heart will blink until the day you are no longer on this planet. We all do it. All 7.8 billion people on this planet. I think there's 7.8 billion people, but we all do it in some form of another. So we've just become very scared of a sensation and we we, we got into that cycle very quickly. If we would know any better, you know, let's say I'm recovered in five years and I notice my blinking for a couple seconds. We all notice that. And that's just what happens. So it would have kept me out of the cycle. But when you don't understand, you can get locked. So, so what happened from there? I played video games really badly, graduated school. I left, moved to Colorado Springs where I started practicing. Excuse me. I had two kidney stone surgeries in, Feb- Ooh, in February. That was not good. I was in a really low place. I was playing so much. I mean, I'm telling you, I was playing 100 hours a week minimum. Think about that. 100 hours a week of video games. I played from every moment, every second. Um, The doctor, my wife took the medication, the pain pills for my uh, kidney stone surgery. I don't know if you guys know much about kidney stones. It's the closest a male can come to giving childbirth that pain. It's really severe. I've had a couple, but this was the first time I had surgery and I needed two of them. So I was in a low place. My wife had to take the medication. It wasn't good. Um, I did was working with Rob at this point, but we knew that, I mean, Rob I'm sure knows or anyone knows when someone doesn't want to do something, it's the same thing for an alcoholic. The recovery process comes from us. It doesn't come from anyone else. You could be at the best facility on earth, and if you don't want to make the changes, you are not going to make them. And no matter how much scientific data, no matter how many recovered people come to you, you have to make the decision, and you have to persist through the pain. That's huge. 
So I started recovery on May 1st, okay? I don't keep a timeline. The only reason I know that is that's when I stopped playing video games. So I haven't played video games for six months and four days. The first couple months were really bad. I didn't even know what was going on when I was with patients. I was so hyper-focused, so hyper-aware, freaking out all the time, anxiety. Boom, 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 boom. Patients are telling me about stuff. And I'm just, you know, I have to focus as best as I can. But I realized I was going through something very traumatic, so I didn't beat myself up over it. I think that helped a little bit for me, taking away that, that you know, that guilt of, oh, I should be a better person. I don't do that, and, and that's a good thing for me. So where am I now, okay? I still have ups and downs. I'm handling them way better. I'm still pretty much hyper aware, but there's a lot of times where I'm not that hyper aware. Uh, I, when I make a mistake now where I kind of go off the rails a little bit, making something compulsive, I'm a lot better now of ringing it back and saying to myself, let me give you a prime example of what happened today. My brain was like, that's it. No more coffee. You're, it's becoming compulsive again. Just get off social media. Usually I would have freaked out, a total meltdown. But I said, you know what? That's not bad. That's not real. Caffeine and social media are not inherently bad. They're like anything in life. You know, we balance our drinking. We balance, you know, if you're a cigar smoker or we balance many things in our life. Social media just needs to be balanced for someone like me. I, you might be naturally good at this. Balance is not good with me. I've never stuck to anything really long term in my life except my exercise regimen and counting macronutrients. So there was a lot of things I need to work with. But today was a great win for me because even though I've been very stressed, very anxious all day today, I didn't say to myself, I'm going to cut back completely on this, okay? Because that would be going back to where I was. And that's not what I'm willing to do. I said, maybe I'll just use Facebook on my computer. That's it. I won't use it on my phone um, and so forth. Just back to one cup of coffee a day. I quickly got back up to two or three. Um, and, and that was a mistake. And I don't beat myself up over that. So... And this is what's really important about the, the journey through somatic OCD because the sensation is with you all day and it can feel like you're almost being tortured. Rob touches on this. I can tell you from experience exactly what it feels like. It almost feels like being waterboarded all day long, but it's doable. So I had to break down these beliefs over time, which became very, compul very compulsive very fast. I was journaling two times a day for 40 minutes. Um... And so forth, I was reading three, four hours a day because I had to get everything right. And this is just what we do naturally in the beginning. So if you're doing this right now, it's okay because you can work on it. Well, it's not okay, but you know what I mean. You can go about changing it. So the recovery journey is, I've done this in every video. It's not like this. It's not like this. And it's like this. So I have right now, I'm kind of like in this pace where I'm kind of trending upwards. And I'll get to a point and just down, work my way back up, change a couple things and go from there. So that is huge. I want to talk about a couple things that have worked for me. Okay. This is what's worked for me. Not sleeping in. Okay. I used to get up in the morning at 3.50 in the morning. Okay. Crazy Nick over here. 3.50 in the morning. How you doing? You know what I mean? So sleeping, waking up at the, at the right time. Uh, not going with the flow more. It doesn't have, hey, Nick, how does that relate to somatic OCD? Because I wanted to control everything. So no, going with the flow more. It's okay to have a routine and a schedule, but if you don't go on your schedule, let's go with it. That's life. There's always another day. You know what I mean? Um, uh, a disputing over time, understanding that even if I was stuck like this forever, I would not like that acceptance and agreement, not the same. There's lots of videos on this channel about that. Huge misconception. I do not agree with OCD at all, but I can accept usually on my plates. That was a huge game changer. Getting back in a healthy structure of life, not playing video games, not compulsively watching porn, doing all these things that were building better habits, building my business with my wife, making YouTube videos for you guys so you could listen to me talk and say Nick's hilarious and crazy and also learn something. Um, what does not work for me, I'm going to say this again, what does not work for me and some things I don't think work specifically, mindfulness. I am not going to go into detail about this because this is a hot topic. Mindfulness is very important for understanding where you need to start. I do not think mindfulness helps specifically with somatic OCD at all. I actually think it's very detrimental. 
because you're already internally focused. You want to be outward focused on doing healthy behaviors, healthy habits, hiking, meeting with my attorney, meeting with my CPA in 22 minutes, and going forth and doing these things in life. Um, uh, I'm not a Buddhist monk. I don't want to be a monk. I don't want to be mindful all day. I own a business. Business owners have to think ahead. They have to plan. That's not being mindful. That's not living in the moment. A lot of my day I don't live in the moment because I'm thinking about other things. Am I saying that's the healthiest way? Absolutely not. Everyone is different. This is what works for me. So anyway, that's enough on mindfulness. Um, Long-term distractions, chewing gum, doing all these things, compulsively doing things to get your mind off your sensation. Short-term distraction is very, very, very beneficial, but long-term distraction will not work, especially for me. I saw it anecdotally. It's just my experiences, but long-term distraction kept me in a place of absolute locked OCD, and my wife could attest to that right now, um, and that was something. So mindfulness, no. Um, uh, Long-term distraction, no. Heavy caffeine usage. We have anxiety disorders. Is caffeine inherently bad? No. You Did I have to cut back for a while? Yes. Do I still struggle with it? Yes. Am I going to struggle with it for a little bit longer? Probably. I love caffeine. So, you know, understanding, you know, what works for you. Oh, focusing on your own recovery journey. What did I just say? Focus on your own recovery journey. My beard's really red. Anyway, so focus on it. You know, don't compare the suffer. You know, focus on yourself. The society, we're so obsessed with, oh my God, this person is super shredded. Oh my gosh, this person has a great haircut. Oh my God, they're so much prettier than me. No, just focus on yourself. It's not easy to do, but over time, working through acceptance and disputing, and we all have flaws, we're human, and we're all fallible. Very, very important. So those are the things that don't work for me. Um, I think that they might. some of the things that I say don't work might work for you. I don't know. So these are what's worked for me. And that, uh, what's worked for me and what hasn't worked for me. Somatic OCD is not any different than any other fear. You just have a, have a fear of a sensation. You're not afraid of, say, X other things, of knives or germs or anything. Your fear is sensations, okay? Every single OCD has their own pros and cons to the journey of recovery. Every OCD is recoverable. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was an, a 17 minute video. I really could talk about this for 22 hours, 23 hours, but I'm going to cut it at this. I think it's really important to cover this. I will do more somatic OCD topics. If anyone has any questions, feel free to ask below. This is a very uncommon, there, like I said, the, the information on somatic OCD is very, very low and it keeps people very alone and very scared. But guess what? I have it. So if you want to talk, Shoot a message down below and I'll tell you what worked for me and what didn't work for me. And we could talk about experiences. We could talk about other things too. We could talk about movies or music because it's good to talk about other things in life outside of OCD. So, but you don't want to run from OCD. Let me leave it at that. Don't think that if you get recovered and run away, you won't recover that way because you, you know, my brain says, well, don't talk about somatic OCD because you'll be, no, no, no. That's part of acceptance and recovery. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Have a terrific day.